Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Tell Telly Hank to with the action. With, with the Bible speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. Went fat cat with 10 queens up. Go all off the profit, not the re-up. Fly, fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Up, uptown like I'm Baby Mane, just caught a touchdown. All right, James. Why'd you get a hold of me? Why do you, why do you want to talk? I got a hold of you because yesterday it was some fabrication on the news that was allegedly said that I was informing or that I'm coming to be a key witness to testify in a case that I'm not even testifying in. I have no knowledge of and I've not forewarned nobody. Okay, forget my confusion. The reporting said this is what was said by the prosecutor. The prosecutor said they intended to uh, call you as a witness. Have you been called as a witness? Yes. And the defense says, we believe he's been an agent because there was this, this, and this. You're saying that you've given no information about this case? No information about this case. And when I was subpoenaed, I told the judge on record yesterday that I didn't want to come to court. I don't know nothing about testifying on this, on this guy that's in question. You don't know how. I mean, I know him, but I mean, he's he's never told me nothing about his case. He's never admitted nothing to me about doing anything. He's my we we, we Muslims. I mean, I know him, but I'm not I'm not okay. coming to testify. Here's on. what they said. You wrote a letter. Did you write a letter? No. You never wrote a letter? No. They have a letter in their possession. You know, you never. I've never wrote a letter. Wrote a letter said you had a bombshell of information on the murder. You never wrote that? I never wrote no letter. I never talked to detectives about in questioning on, on uh, this guy, John Jones. It's propaganda that's been going on since I've been released. It's coming from the jail and coming from people. I've never talked to detectives. In fact, they try to reach me. A rat and police call him a murderer. But now he's also playing the role of a victim after investigators arrest another suspect for trying to rob and kill him. My life was on the line. And... When I was reaching out to ask for help from all these elect people, nothing was done. James Mallory says ever since his name surfaced as a possible jailhouse informant back in February, he has been a target. He points to this wound on his knee as evidence that someone shot him last month. Now, police say 23-year-old William O'Bannon, along with two other people, did just that on April 10th. According to an arrest slip, the trio lured Mallory into an alley near 2nd and Jacob Streets and tried to rob and murder him. But when asked about O'Bannon, Mallory kept quiet. I don't know him, but I, I don't want to comment too much on the situation. That arrest slip also says O'Bannon asked Mallory if he was going to testify against his people. Mallory was scheduled to take the stand in the... I'm not at liberty to prove my innocence through the media because anything that I say... It's going to be used against me later on. However, Mallory did, for the first time, admit to some form of cooperation with the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office, though he says he never intended to follow through on it and insists he never agreed to testify in specific cases. I thought I could play this game. I'm admitting. I thought I could just say, you know, okay, I'll do it and get out and just renege. Nothing was signed by me. Nothing was went on, on tape that I'm going to work and do this or that. Basically, you might as well say I got tricked. And they was getting employed to try to convict guys that they haven't been able to he convict. He says police know as who they're looking for. They know. They know. And I'm not going to sit and get on the news and have them do their job. They know what's going on. If I wrote this it's been a busy week for James Mallory. Monday, he was arrested and charged with murder for his alleged involvement in the death of a 15-year-old boy. Friday, he was called as a key witness in the attempted murder trial. Jones is accused of shooting 19-year-old Kayla Streeter in the face. One of the first questions centers around a letter written to the Commonwealth's attorney's office thought to have been penned by Mallory. You don't offer the Commonwealth, quote, bombshell evidence on numerous cases. Nah. Mallory was told by Judge Frederick Cowan to specifically answer what he is asked. So when he tried to bring up a previous conversation, he was shut down. Never admitted nothing to me. Okay, okay, Mr. Mallory, that's just answer the question. That's all.
Mallory claims despite being let out of an eight-year prison sentence by shock probation, he never made a deal to testify. On the street, they're called snitches or rats, slang for those who cut deals to testify, often in exchange for their own freedom. While snitches help convict other criminals, there is a growing concern about the snitches themselves. And no one demonstrates that concern more than James Mallory. Help me, and I help you. Why can't you? Well, what are you, what are you proposing? Help me help you. What does that mean? He's saying I don't, I, need, I, I don't have no money until next week. In this meeting on March 23rd, James Mallory, a jailhouse snitch in fear for his life, made it clear he was after cash. My iPhone captured it all. I'm not going to do an interview for nothing when nobody wants me to do it. Mallory said it would nobody be our knows. secret that he would hide the truth. Nobody knows what me and you talk to. If they ever ask me, you see how I'm sticking to my Yeah, but you'd have to lie then. You're going to lie it about that? Matter. I made it clear he would not get money from me. It's dirty. I can't be dirty. This wasn't the first time we met. You're not a rat. Yes. That's you're, what you're I'm, not a rat. I'm not a rat. That was Mallory in February. He was just released on shock probation, even though he violated his previous probation. Still, Mallory insisted he was not a snitch. Never made a deal. Never made a deal. But Mallory had already been named as an informant in court. He, of course, was an agent of the Commonwealth, and he was their informant. And in his own writing, in this letter Mallory sent to the Commonwealth's attorney in December, he promised bombshell evidence to solve several high-profile murder cases. He later agreed to provide information new documents and testimony. just released shed new light on a high-profile murder case. It's all centered on an informant and what he said to police. WLKY Steve Tellier is live at the Judicial Center with those details. Steve? Rick and Vicki, this is the case of a woman who was murdered before she had a chance to testify at another murder trial. Now we are getting our very first look at a key police interview that had been sealed evidence until now. Dewan Hammond and Stephen Petway are accused of killing Troya Shekels, who was supposed to be a key witness in the murder trial of Dewan's brother, Lloyd. Selected is underway in a triple murder trial of a Louisville man. Lloyd Hammond could face the death penalty if convicted. Andy Alcock is live outside the Judicial Center where the jury selection process started today. Andy? And Vicki, we've seen how critically important that process is in this case in particular. A problem with the previous jury resulted in one of a series of delays in this now four-year-old case. It was all set to go. In December, Lloyd Hammond's trial had started with jury selection. Then a potential juror took a phone call in the jury room. Witnesses say he loudly complained Hammond would get fried because there weren't any African Americans on the jury. The result? The trial was postponed until now. When we get ready for trial, we do everything we can to make sure we have a trial on that day to resolve that case. And so we don't want to cost the community any money by not having a trial. So it is frustrating from that aspect. We had a jury picked, or so we thought, to hear this case. We think our client has a good case. We don't think he's guilty. Hammond is accused of murdering William Sawyers on June 3, 2006. Then he's accused of murdering his accomplice in the Sawyer slaying, Terrell Cherry, on the same day to keep him quiet. Hammond is also accused of killing Carrie Williams two weeks later on June 17, 2006. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will reappear for the jury trial in this case? Another murder also figures prominently in this case. In February 2009, Troya Shekels appeared before Judge Audra Eckerly to agree to testify against Hammond. According to court records, Hammond held Shekels hostage while he murdered Shekels' boyfriend, William Sawyers. One month after agreeing to testify against Hammond, Shekels was shot and killed in broad daylight in Shelby Park. Unfortunately, our criminal justice system is overtaxed and underfunded and um, incapable of providing proper protection for a witness like Troya. However, despite the murder and over the objections of Hammond's attorneys, Judge Eckerly has ruled Shekels' statements to police will be allowed as evidence in the trial. The specific nature of how that murder of Ms. Shekels relates, we believe, directly to this case. Individual appointments were set today for prospective jurors to discuss their feelings about the death penalty. 
Earlier this month, hundreds of pages of court documents were released, including several witness statements implicating Hammond and Petway. But one was not released until Monday, the summary of a police interview with James Mallory. You're uh, not a I'm rat. not a rat. According to that document, a detective interviewed Mallory last month. It states he told police that on the day of Shekel's murder, Dewan Hammond told him, quote, we ready to go get this woman out of the way. Mallory also told police Petway gave him a play-by-play -play of the entire crime. Quote, Hammond was driving and dropped Petway off at the park. Hammond got out of the car and pointed Shekels out. Petway put a bandana over his face and walked up to where she was sitting on the bench while Hammond waited in his car. Petway shot her and took off running and got in the car with Hammond. Mallory also told police he saw Hammond at a strip club hours after Shekels was murdered and that Hammond, quote, kept smiling and saying his brother was getting ready to get out because he handled that woman. Just last week, Mallory denied serving as an informant in another case. Never made a deal. Never made a deal. Never told the authorities about anyone about any violent crime. You never tipped them. Never informed anyone. Also last week, the murder suspect himself called Mallory an unreliable source. It's not credible. <laughs> it's a plain lie. There are still three other witness statements that remain sealed in this case, all to protect the safety of those witnesses. Live at the Judicial Center, I'm Steve Tellier, WLKY News. All right, thank you, Steve. Now, Stephen Petway made a court appearance yesterday where most of the discussion centered on what documents could and could not be released in the case. Petway and Hammond are both scheduled to go on trial say, at the end of after July. After a two-year investigation, Louisville Metro Police make an arrest in the murder of one of their key witnesses in a complex triple gang murder. Just moments ago, two men appeared before a judge to be arraigned for the murder of Troya Shekels. Ann Bowden joins us live for the Judicial Center with more. And Ann, just reading through this, I can tell you this is a very convoluted story. It is. It's a very complex case, Eric. In March of 2009, Troya Shekels was gunned down in broad daylight at Shelby Park. That was just one month after she agreed to be a key witness against a known gang member, Lloyd Hammond, in the case where he killed one person, including her boyfriend, and two other men. But she never got the chance. Today, Lloyd Hammond's brother, 31-year-old Dewan Hammond, was arraigned for her murder, for the murder of Troya Shekels, in circuit court this morning. Now, he, along with 19-year-old Stephen Petway, pled not guilty before Judge Irv Mays. They both have um, a bond of $1 million dollars, excuse me, and uh, while Petway was pretty quiet during arraignment this morning, Juan Hammond had plenty to say in defiance. Who is your attorney, Mr. Hammond? Well, what would I need an attorney for? Well, I think under these charges, you probably do need an attorney. I mean, I understand what's going on, and yes. I understand that I could have been indicted in any courtroom for some strange reason. Rostein made sure I was in front of you. For some strange reason, so I don't need no attorney right now. So he was asking not, uh, he was asking for uh, not to have an attorney, and he walked out uh, with the deputies following behind. Uh, Judge Irv Mays didn't really even get to set, uh, get to uh, complete what he was telling Mr. Hammond, and uh, but he did appoint him an attorney anyway. Now. The two men were arraigned on murder charges and retaliation of a witness in a government process. And by the way, that person that Troy Shekels was supposed to testify against, Lloyd Hammond, he was found guilty of murder of those three men in that case, despite her testimony not being there. Reporting live outside the Judicial Center, Ann Bowden, WLKY. Send it out News. live right, right now to WLKY's Tim Elliott because Lloyd Hammond has just been released from jail. We are going to send it to him for all of the late breaking updates. Well, Lexi, we've been here since about 8 o'clock outside of Metro Corrections this morning. We got word that Lloyd Hammond was going to be released from uh, jail this morning. We weren't sure what time that was going to happen. Then around 10.30, we heard that he was going to be released in about an hour. He walked through those doors, out of those doors here at Metro Corrections just after 11.30. Now, after he walked out of those doors, he was clearly agitated with the sight of the throng of reporters that were in front of him. He told us a couple of times to get out of his way. He used a couple of expletives as well to tell us to get out of his way, but we didn't get any reaction from Lloyd Hammond today about his release, but you may remember that Hammond was convicted of killing three people, but that convi those convictions were overturned by the Kentucky Supreme Court. On Monday, as you say, Lexi, he pled guilty to manslaughter. Now, this case has been going on since 2006, so Hammond 
has spent the past seven and a half years behind bars. He took that plea deal on Monday where he pled guilty to a lesser charge of manslaughter. He was sentenced to 10 years. As I say, he spent the past seven and a half years behind bars. Now, he is getting credit for time served. As he was released from jail this morning, he was clearly agitated. I said he was a little hostile as well. Uh, we saw a car come by, pick him up. He had a couple of boxes of his belongings in his possession as well. We asked for a comment, any kind of comment, to address the victim's families, how it felt to be a free man, but all of our questions went unanswered here down at Metro Corrections. Reporting live from downtown Louisville, Tim Elliott, WLKY News. We waited 12 long years for this. Justice has finally been served for our families. Standing outside the courtroom, the families of William Sawyers and Terrell Cherry hugged. This is a day they say they've been waiting for for more than a decade. It's the best day in the world for us. After three trials, a jury found Lloyd Hammond guilty of facilitating the 2006 murder of Terrell Cherry. Police say Cherry was killed because he witnessed the deadly shooting of William Sawyers earlier that day. A jury recommended Hammond spend 65 years in prison for his role in the crimes. I think 65 years sends a clear message to Mr. Hammond about what he did and the, the hurt he caused our community. Before the jury made its decision, Terrell Cherry's mother told jurors she lives with the pain of her son's death every day. And then to shoot him three times in the head and leave him there. <laughs> That's not... Lord. I'm just saying it hurts. It hurts. William Sawyer's sister says her brother was her best friend. The day my brother was taken from me, I felt like I was, I went with my brother. My life, it has been nothing but stress for 12 years. Hammond was convicted of the murders once before, but that verdict was thrown out by the state Supreme Court in 2010. The families say they're glad Hammond's trial ended with another guilty verdict. What family wants to go through pain three times? None to relive it over and over and over again. Lloyd Hammond's attorney tells me they've already decided to appeal the jury's decision. Hammond is set to be formally sentenced in April. Reporting live downtown, Emily Maha, WLKY News. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Papala. Mob ties. We on our way to Louisville, Kentucky with it. Y'all already know how I get when we get to Louisville. All my niggas in Kentucky. Y'all know what to do. Now, the case or the topic or the gangsters that we're going to be covering today are going to be two brothers by the name of Lloyd and Dewan Hammond. Now, a little bit about the two brothers. Lloyd... Um, I can't even really say who's younger or who's old. I don't, I'm not privy to that information. But we're going to start the story off with Lloyd. Because in 2006, he found himself in some trouble. Where he was charged with a triple murder. Where it's alleged that he murdered or he was convicted. His, his kids convicted. The, the convictions was overturned. He was reconvicted. He was reindicted. So... Y'all pretty much decide what the fuck happened. Well, in 2006, he was, uh, I guess he was charged in 2009, but it was alleged in 2006 that he committed a triple murder um, with one of the victims. Well, this is crazy. One of the victims was allegedly, like, kidnapped. And his girlfriend was had, held hostage and she witnessed the killing. Um, and she, in turn, would later become a victim of violence from Lloyd's brother, Dewan Hammond. But uh, another one of the other victims, um, one of the, the other victim was actually an accomplice in the murder um, of... Troya Shekel's boyfriend and 
it's said that Lloyd Hammond ended up killing him so that he wouldn't testify against him in that case. So these niggas was eliminating witnesses off the top. And the third nigga, I want to say his name was William Sawyer, was like almost the odd man out. Um, he just got killed for some coke. <laughs> he just killed. He, we just going to smoke him for the coke or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that shit crazy. So that all of that shit happened allegedly in 2006. Now, 2009, when he was first tried for this, um, that case ended in a mistrial where I want to say they said his lawyer said something along the lines of ain't no black people on this case. He's going to get lynched. And that caused that case to be thrown. Now, he was convicted a year later in 2010. But that conviction was overturned by the Supreme Court because they allowed testimony um, of Troya Shekels, Troya Shekels, even though she was murdered um, in retaliation to her boyfriend, whose case uh, they were on trial for. Um, and the reason it was overturned is they said that the defense never had a chance to cross-examine her. So her, um, the information from her case should not have been subject or have been admissible in court. Now, Troya Shekels, after um, the 2006 murders, Troya Shekels was then murdered in a part of Louisville called Shelby Park. Anybody familiar with Louisville? Um, in the comment box, let us be known. Um, I'm going to go out on the limb and say Shelby Park is... Um, I wonder, maybe it could be a park, but it sounds like it could be a specific neighborhood. But, um, yeah, she was murdered in 2009 after agreeing to testify against Hammond uh, in that murder case. Now, um, after she was murdered, it took almost five years for DeWan Hammond to come up as a suspect in that case. And in 2014, he was found guilty um, along with another guy, and he was inevitably sentenced to 35 years um, in the state joint. And the other guy was a guy by the... Uh, I know his, by his last name was Petway. He was found guilty... Um, and a year before that, in May 2013, of murder and intimidation for his role in the murder of Troy Shekels. But you know what's the crazy and wild thing? It took five years and all of that shit came um, to a full head or the case didn't seem like it got it was strong against the one Hammonds. Um, and the dude Petway, because if her murder happened in 2009 and um, DeWan Hammond was convicted in 2014, um, a lot of it kind of centered around the information that it seems like the informant was able to give them. And the informant I'm talking about is going to be the gentleman, James Mallory, at the beginning. Seemed like he reputed in the Louisville area. Anybody know him? Anybody that have any kind of damn, I don't want to say information, because it seemed like he was fighting the murder beef or whatever, but anybody that knew him from the neighborhood know anything about him? Come on, y'all niggas get in the comment box. That nigga was epic, for real, for real. Um, and just imagine how many niggas' paperwork he's on. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, 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 ties.